Hey everyone, this is Melissa, and I'm the talkative introvert. So for today's episode, I am joined by Ash Pariseau. She is a certified dating and relationship consultant and professional writer currently residing along the coast of South Carolina. Her mission is to help women cut through the BS and become valued in relationships with quality men by setting realistic standards and establishing healthy boundaries. So thank you so much for joining me in today's episode. Thank you for having me. Yeah, I'm excited to talk about, you know, relationships and dating and all that stuff. So, uh, but before we get to that, I have been asking all my guests, um, I already know this, but because we talked previously, but for everybody else, are you an introvert, extrovert, or an ambivert somewhere in the middle? I consider myself an introvert for sure. Sorry, I'm going to be like a little raspy today. Or, or I mean, I guess I'm pretty raspy every day, but like more than usual. <laughs> I've been yeah, in meetings like back to back since nine in the morning to like almost five. So, oh goodness. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's a lot. But, anyways. <laughs> yeah, I bet. <laughs> um, but thanks for still joining me on this podcast. And hopefully, I'm, it's not too bad uh, as we start talking. No, you're good. (laughs) Thank you. (laughs) Um, But yeah, so when you reached out on Podmatch, so for people who don't know what Podmatch is, it's like a, I've been telling people it's kind of like a Tinder for podcast host and guest. Um, So, you know, we get matched with people who want to either be on a podcast or have a podcast. And I was really excited to you know, get you on because you are a dating and relationship consultant and I've never talked to one before. And I have like zero experience in that world because I've been with my husband since I was like 15. So I've never done any like adult dating or (laughs) been in like, (laughs) you know, any like serious relationships other than this one. So um, I'm pretty excited to talk to you about that. Yeah, definitely. Um, I saw you on Podmatch and I was looking at your profile on there and it was, it just kind of jumped out to me that you were, um, you know, that the title was the talkative introvert. And I was just like, oh, that's, that's kind of, you know, what I identify with. And then I saw that you're an INTJ, which I am as well. So we're a rare breed as, you know, the dark unicorns of <laughs> of the Myers-Briggs. <laughs> personalities. So I thought that was really exciting. Oh yeah. Um, yeah, that's what excited me too. Like when you said that you're an INTJ, because the only other person I know is my sister-in-law and I haven't (laughs) met any other like female INTJs, at least not ones that are, you know, I've taken the test. So maybe I have, but I don't know if they are. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. We're definitely the, uh, the dark unicorns. Yeah. It's pretty awesome. Yeah, I think so. I, it was pretty cool to learn how rare they are. But also it's like, I can see it because I don't really know a lot of people who think like I do. Yeah. So it, yeah. <laughs> so it definitely is rare. Um, but as far as like the relationship and dating consultant, so why did you decide to go that route? You know, what interests you about it? Well, it's just something that I've, felt compelled towards for a long time ever since I started writing um, because I I started out as a writer a long time ago um, I've just always enjoyed writing um, discussing conversations around dating and relationships and it's been an area that interests me because it's something that almost everybody has experience with and can relate to in some way Um, and you know, like most people, I was once, you know, (laughs) confused and lost, um, (laughs) you know, navigating through the dating world myself, um, and just very naive and making mistakes and just through trial and error and time and maturity, I've learned how to, 
um, you know, I've, I've just learned the ropes of what it means to be in a healthy relationship with somebody who aligns well with me. And I think that just through all of my own errors, <laughs> I have felt called to help other women. You know, I, I want to help them through their struggles as well. That's awesome. I think a lot of people would appreciate that, you know, uh, especially now. I mean, I don't, I don't know how difficult it is now versus back then, but, uh, from my friend's experience, since I can't really talk about my own, um, it's pretty tough. It's hard. It's, it's hard, um, doing the whole dating app stuff and hard to find, I guess the one or the right person or someone that you want to spend, you know, have a serious relationship with. So Uh I can see how having some type of guidance would be helpful. Yes. Um, (laughs) I believe it is, is, you know, according to a lot of the people that have stories, the stories I read, the stories that come to me in my inbox. Um, it's an area that is, is, um, has, definitely a lot of room for improvement. Um, it's an area that people really need help with. So, you know, um, I just want to share what I've learned and if it helps people, then that is why I'm here. That's what I want to do. Um, so you, you do work with clients, right? Um, I'm assuming like people reach out to you, you have your clientele base. And so, uh, do you get a lot of introverted clients? Yeah, there's more than I thought that there would be. A person's introverted nature may not always be obvious right out of the gate, but once I get to know them, it does tend to reveal itself naturally. And I'm kind of glad that it does because introversion, introversion, uh, it does make a difference in how you approach dating and navigate relationships introverted women approaching dating and like you approach dating in a different way and then you relate to people in a different way than an extroverted person will. Uh, But yes, it does come up often. Eventually at some point um, it shows up within the coaching sessions as well. I feel like um, because the, you know, I, I am the talkative introvert and I chose introvert because it's such a big part of my personality and who I am. And it's a, a big part of like my, dis- my decision making. Um, so I feel like, I don't know if I was dating right now, if I was single right now, I feel like it would just be so hard for me just because I'm not a super social person <laughs> and I'm not always going out And I rarely like go to the bars or the clubs or, you know, any, like any type of like those types of, you know, areas, I guess, like uh, Uh venues and whatnot. So I feel like, um, I I can see how your clientele can be largely like introverted. Yeah, it definitely is something that is significant when it does show up. So it's always, I always appreciate when someone opens up to me and, you know, starts talking about how introverted they are and, you know, it, cause at that point it's so easy for me to be able to relate to them and help them navigate through those struggles through the mm-hmm. lens of an introvert. So what is your experience with dating? How's that been, you know, in the past or now? I'm not sure if you're single or not. So, I mean, it's, well, like you, you know, I haven't really been in <laughs> in the dating game for a long time. (laughs) Um, But I think that in the past, I mean, I've always known for a long time that I'm an introvert. Um, But I think at some point, you know, in my early 20s, I've come to realize like what it means to me, how I can serve energy while dating and while in a relationship. You know, I tend to be someone who's most comfortable being in my calm and reserved, laid back state. Um, And some people might take that as indifference, um, except for other introverts, because another introvert who who has awareness understands. So for me, it's always been more 
like I've had two serious long-term relationships and they've both been with introverted men. I have dated extroverted men, but those just happen to not be anything that, you know, lasted or materialized. Um, so I, I don't know if that's just by chance, um, but it does seem to be that I am more comfortable with another introvert. Yeah, I feel like I'm not saying that, you know, introverts and extroverts can't date because, you know, everyone's on a spectrum. Not everyone's like 100% one or the other. But for me personally, like I'm extremely introverted. I love being home. I spend most of my weekends home and most of my, you know, free time home. And I feel like an introvert would just understand that. Whereas yes. someone who's very extroverted, you know, they may not be happy in that kind of relationship and they may want to like go out and cause even like going out to eat, like sometimes my husband and I are like, we should go out to eat. You know, we haven't left the house in a while, but when we do, we're just like, I just wish we just took, you know, had takeout and just brought it home <laughs> and watch TV or something. <laughs> yeah, I definitely feel it. I mean, so how, how about, how about, um, you, Cause I know that for me, like during the pandemic, like, you know, everybody was ordered to stay home. Um, for me, that was not a problem at all. <laughs> I very much enjoyed being home and it, as weird as it sounds, I enjoyed the idea of other people staying home. Cause sometimes I feel like people are just, you know, out and about and they're like, they just get, you know, get so restless and they have to do something. I'm like, everybody just chill. Just, you know, <laughs> calm down, stay at home, like enjoy your family, enjoy your partners. And like, that's something that, uh, that me and mine did. We just enjoyed each other's company, you know, together. And it was awesome. I don't, I mean, under the circumstance, I mean, you know, I'm not saying the, the pandemic was awesome. Um, <laughs> no, I get it. <laughs> but you know what I mean? I mean, you know, just, just having the opportunity to just be at home with him and just enjoy his company. And, you know, I really felt that, you know, a lot of, you know, that time period was really testing for a lot of relationships, which I find very interesting. Yeah. I, th I thought it was kind of a, I was pretty shocked um, seeing those articles come out where like people are, literally getting divorces some people like led to domestic violence and i'm yes. just like do you guys not spend time together like right, do these right. people not like hang out with each other like if you can't hang out with each other can't spend time with each other why are you together in the first place like i think that's so weird that that happened and uh -huh. it took the pandemic and forcing them to stay in one house together to realize that and I don't know. It kind of just goes to show that you, you still kind of need to date your spouse or your long-term partner because yes. it's um, like, you still need to hang out with them, like legit hang out with them and spend time with them to see if you guys should even be together still. And I mean, I guess the pandemic is good, good and bad. Um, I guess when it comes to relationships, I would, you know, because then people are finally realizing whether, they were meant to be in that relationship or not. So mm -hmm. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah. There's a, um, it's like a cartoon meme that I've mm -hmm. seen and it's like this drawing of a couple and it says, I love being alone together. And it just has them like together reading, you know, they're both reading a different book. Yeah. And so I, I know that introvert, you know, an introvert will understand that. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Like, I will, I like being in the same space as my husband, but we don't have to do the same things. Like we don't have to interact or talk. I just like his presence, you know? Yeah. I mean, enough. you don't have to be up each other's <laughs> ass all the time. Yeah. <laughs> but, you know, it's just nice to just be in the same space and just, you know, be. Yeah, exactly. Um what was I going to say? Sorry. I just had like a brain fart. This happens <laughs> a lot when I do interviews after work, <laughs> fortunately. It is it like, is late. It is. Well, you're, you're ahead of me because I'm yeah, in so California. It's, it's after 10 for me, but it's, oh, it's, it's after right. 10. Oh, okay. Uh -huh. <laughs> uh, 
I didn't realize it was that late. Well, <laughs> thanks cool. for staying up. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's cool. So um, I guess going back to like relationships, and I know we talked previously about, you know, introvert relationships. And one of the things I did want to talk to you about are, you know, some myths. So like on previous episodes on my podcast, I do talk about like misconceptions and pet peeves and like all these things people may not know about um, introverts in general, but like I wanted to talk about, you know, introverts in a relationship. Like what are the types of myths that can arise from that? I would say that, I mean, some of the myths that I've heard, I've heard that some people assume that introverts are going to be more submissive. And I, I mean, while some probably are, I'm sure, but I think that that has to do with, you know, how introverts tend to be laid back and easygoing. And I think that people think that, oh, they're just going, you know, to be more passive in a relationship. And that could be true, but I think it's important for people to remember that, you know, regardless of whether or not you're an introvert or an extrovert, if you, if you know, if an introvert is being pushed around, they will, you know, start to develop boundaries and, you know, a line to be crossed, you know. Um, So I think that, you know, I hope that people don't think, oh, I just want to be with an introvert because, you know, they'll let me do whatever I want because I can assure you as an introvert, yeah, that's not happening because I definitely, (laughs) I don't know about you, but I definitely have boundaries and, you know, will assert them if necessary. (laughs) Yeah, definitely. Because I am not submissive. (laughs) I'm pretty like headstrong and I'm very particular and I, I know what I like and I know what I want. And I don't really like when people tell me what to do. I don't know if you're the same way. Oh, definitely. (laughs) I definitely don't. (laughs) Yeah. It just makes me want to do it more. You know, Mm -hmm. even if I don't want to do it anymore, it just makes me want to do it because they told me I don't want to, or that I shouldn't. Um. (laughs) So we, we introverts can have a rebellious streak as well. Yeah. I think there, that goes to like the misconceptions that, you know, introverts are just these like quiet, reserved, like, you know, shy people who, stay in the corner, but really, you know, um, we have, we can have big personalities and we can have very like headstrong, uh, ideals and things that we, you know, want and all that. So. Yeah. Yeah, I think many people think that introvert, like introversion means being shy, but I think more than that, it means how, you know, it's, it's how your energy is gained and how you prefer to use your energy. And introverts tend to focus on inner thoughts and feelings rather than what's happening externally. Mm-hmm. So it's not necessarily about being shy. It's, it's more about how you can serve and gain energy. Yeah, exactly. And like I mentioned this earlier, everyone is on a spectrum, you know, someone could be, um, so I, when I took the MBTI quiz the free one I didn't do like the official like $50 one but um you know I think the free one's probably just as good I got like extremely introverted like 93 percent or something crazy like that oh wow yeah yeah I I mean I believe it (laughs) (laughs) um but my friend one of my friends I think she got like 73 percent or something like that and I was like, yeah, I believe it because she's pretty introverted, but she's the only one in our group that always asks if we want to like go out, like go downtown or go like um, like bar hopping or something. Mm-hmm. And so I think that's another misconception too. Like maybe extroverts don't want to date introverts because they'll never like want to go out or do something fun. But, you know, we are in a spectrum and, you know, my friend's like a good example of someone who will go out occasionally, not every weekend, but you know, she likes to still go out. Yeah. That's kind of like me too. I like to go out occasionally. I would say it's like an 80, 20. Yeah. Yeah. 
uh, 80%, I like to stay home. 20%, I like to, and when I do go out, I, I you know, I don't mind um, going out to eat. I would say that that's probably one of my favorite go out things to do, <laughs> you yeah. know, because I, I just like the environment of a restaurant, um, you know, and things like shopping and going to a movie. You know, I'm not really much of a, a bar person as much anymore, um, you know, just because the noise um, starts to get on my nerves after a while. And when I do, it's like I have about a two hour window. Like once I'm there for an hour to two hours, I'm like, all right, time to go. Like I am done. <laughs> yeah, I am the same way. Like I like going out to eat because you can actually like have a real conversation with the people you're hanging out with. Mm-hmm. But when you're at a bar, it's just so I don't know what it is, but too much stimulation is just too much for me. Like I will start to just start to drain. You can start to see it in my face. I'm not very good at hiding it. <laughs> and I just the moment I step out of a bar, it's just like such a big relief. Mm-hmm. Like it just feels so good to like get out of the noise and just be in quiet for a little bit. And, yes. Yeah. I totally understand that. Yeah. Like I, like during the pandemic, we, you know, were quarantined for quite a long time. I don't know how it was in your state, but California didn't really open up for, for a long time. I think we were compared to other states, we stayed in quarantine a lot longer, but um, once we opened up again, you know, we were like, yeah, I want to go out. And we went out, I think like one time and that was kind of that we were good for a while <laughs> after that <laughs> we're like, okay, yeah we got it <laughs> yeah so me and my guy every t- every time we go out and you know we're, we live in a relatively crowded tourist city um definitely more crowded during the summer and then sometimes we'll just be sitting in a house like we need you know like let's go do something let's go out to eat or whatever and then it's like you know, after having an afternoon out, we're kind of like, all right, now I remember why we never go out. <laughs> and then we agree. <laughs> and then we go back home. Yeah, exactly. It's just like a good reminder, you know, like we got to go out every once in a while just to remind us why we don't go out. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes, I get it. Yeah. And so with your introverted clients, like what are what are some of the struggles that they deal with? Like, why do they come to you? Like, what are the, I guess the, the big items? A lot of them feel the need. Well, when, especially when it comes to their introversion, they tend to overcompensate because they feel that they need to because they don't have that big personality or they, they think that they don't have the personality of an extrovert. So they feel like they have to overcompensate. And a lot of them do, um, you know, they just do so much more than their partner. So I kind of help them, you know, with their, with the struggles and the, you know, the guilt that comes with that and, you know, the resentment that comes with, you know, being the partner that does more. Um, I would say that um, when it comes to dating, a lot of them have issues just meeting people and approaching and being social enough to have access to the people that they want to, to meet is definitely the number one thing for people who are a newer or, you know, looking to have a new relationship. Yeah. That, that just seems so exhausting to like overcompensate. And then once you're in the relationship, you know, what then, then you have to kind of be your real self, you know Uh what I mean? And so you're not really giving that, giving that other person a real look of, like who you actually are and how the relationship would end up being, you know, in the long term. Yeah, definitely. So for dating, you know, I know a lot of people use dating apps. I don't know if people still meet each other (laughs) because a lot of people I know they have met each other through an app of some sort. And so like, what are your thoughts on dating apps? 
Oh my goodness. Um, man, I feel for people using dating apps hard. Yeah, (laughs) I I do. I feel for you all hard. Um, (laughs) there are so many out there and I'll, I'll say this, like, um, when it comes to like certain apps, like I think that there might be some that are more introvert friendly. Like I've heard people say nice things about meeting people on the site meetup, which really isn't a dating site, but it's like a group, like a groups meetup site. And there are actually, I know that there are groups on meetup that are personality based. So if you go on there and search like in, you know, introvert or your Myers-Briggs type, I'm sure that there's a group there for that. And you could actually, you know, just start socializing and talking to people, you know, with your, with your same personality type. Um, And I think that that's kind of a more laid back way of approaching meeting somebody rather than something that is so aggressive like tinder for example yeah i think dating apps can be a little hard or very hard um especially for introverts just because like it's picture first you know Mm -hmm. and introverts tend to value like quality over quantity kind of situation like they need to get to know you you know, like yes. they have, they need to have like that deep talk with the person and um, really get to know that person before like really doing anything. And so when you're just basing it off of profile that is very, have like limited characters in just somebody's face, like how do you even know if it's worth swiping on them, you know? Mm, yes. Because introverts definitely are more inward reflective. So it is hard to get through, you know, to get past, you know, the outward appearance. And it seems like so many people are so focused on, you know, the surface level stuff, you know, what you can see right out of the gate. And introverts know that there's so much more beneath that. And it's really, you know, I understand it's it's hard to get to know somebody, but I would encourage introverts to just try different apps and, you know, not all of them are going to be for you. Um, but definitely, I, if I had any recommendations, I would suggest trying something like Meetup for sure. Okay. That's good to know. Yeah. Um, I'm sure. I'm sure there's like so many different apps out there and yeah, just trying to find the right one. So do you mind me asking how you met your, your partner, your guy? Yeah. So I met him actually through my younger sister. Um, he was a friend of her friend and he saw me one day I don't remember where he said he first saw me. I think he said he saw me walking, like walking to work. And he just came up and talked to me. I was working at a pizza place in a town called Albany, Indiana. <laughs> um, and he just started talking to me and, you know, added me on, get this, my space. <laughs> So (laughs) this dates things a little bit here. He added me on MySpace and, you know, we just started talking. We were friends for a little while, you know, and then things progressed after, you know, a few months. Um, But yeah, that's how we met, you know, the good old fashioned way, you know, through, you know, friends, family. (laughs) Yeah. No, I honestly prefer that. If I was ever single again, I would... I don't think I would want to do the apps. It just seems too exhausting. And there's just something about just having a conversation with a stranger, I guess. I don't know. <laughs> and just like a meeting that way. Cause, that, cause also like one of the things I know my friends talk about um, is how, like how, 
what's the right word? I don't want to say ballsy, but like, I guess how ballsy people can be via text, you know? Because there's such oh, a difference with like talking to someone in person and someone texting you. Yeah. It's so true. Like, I don't know. I mean, I, you know, I've sat in on some of the, you know, the, those first initial conversations with a friend of mine. Um, and she's like, well, I just met this guy on, you know, this site and then we're texting and then, you know, I, you know, she lets me read some of the text and whatnot. And for me, I, I don't know, maybe it's just cause I'm not in, in that situation, but I'm like, how do you feel the connection? Like to me, I, I don't know. It's, it's maybe, maybe it's just something I've never experienced because I, you know, I'd been out of the game for so long, <laughs> but I, I don't know. I, I can't imagine just, you know, talking so intimately with somebody I've never met or don't know very well in person. Yeah. Cause one of the things too is um, that I learned is when you're talking to someone like that's why I kind of like doing these podcasts, even though I don't record video, it's, I liked um, seeing the person because a lot of your, your language and how you talk is also your body language, like reading the person's facial expressions and how they, you know, present themselves and all that. And so all of that stuff factors into language and understanding a person. And it's hard to connect with someone. Cause you know, sometimes when you get a text, you don't know if they're being sarcastic or if it's a joke or they're being serious. And then it's just kind of awkward if you, you know, imper- interpreted it wrong, interpreted mm-hmm. it wrong. And so it's just like a little awkward after that, you know, but if you were there in person, then you could be like, oh, okay, you can tell from like their tone of voice or how, you know, if they smiled or laughed or, you know, if they're being like dead serious, uh, whether to like laugh or not. <laughs> So, yeah, even I've had interviews like job interviews like that are via Zoom and, you know, I've had my camera on, but the other person didn't. And I noticed what a difference that is, like me feeling like, you know, I'm, you know, there on camera, but the other person isn't. So I mm-hmm. almost feel like there's that lack of connection there. Um, yeah. So it definitely does make a difference because it, it feels so much better, like having your face right there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Even just like, uh, so our director asked everyone to, if they're not going to be on video to at least put a pic, their profile picture. And even that, like looking at someone's profile picture versus like just their initials, it kind of is, um, it kind of is a big difference. Cause then you're looking at a person, even though they're just, sitting still (laughs) it's still Mm -hmm. like looking into the eyes of somebody and not just you know their initials yes yeah so i yeah i don't know how people create connections and you know my friends have like really bad experiences too where some people just get really hurt or like they they get their ego hurt And they can say some really mean things if you reject them. Like if you decide like, yeah, I'm not feeling it or like I don't want to go on the date or, you know, just not even say anything really mean, but just being honest. Like, I don't think like I want to pursue this. Some people have said like really awful mean things to my friends. And I feel like the only reason they're able to do that is because they're hiding behind their phone. Yes. Oh, yeah, definitely. Yeah. Because how many people would say those things to the, to someone's face? Yeah, exactly. Especially if you're like in public too, you know? So for your clients, you know, like, like, do they talk about how they're able to connect with people during, uh, through apps or like, is that something that they struggle with? Yeah. I would say that a lot of the women that I talk to have issues with, mostly determining, you know, the, the, (laughs) the good guys from the riffraff. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) You know, um, 
you know, the guys who who just want to hook up and the guys who might be interested in an actual relationship. Um, that seems to be the biggest struggle when it comes to the dating apps for women. Yeah, I'm sure it's it's definitely not easy. <laughs> but I'm sure it's not easy in general, even without the apps, you know, just finding somebody. Yeah, definitely. But, you know, when it comes to, you know, determining, you know, and filtering through those, you know, I, you know, I have, you know, noticed certain patterns and, you know, the, there are red flags that I help women look out for, you know, for example, if a guy's, you know, if he, you know, automatically just starts in with the sexual innuendo and wanting to trade dirty pics and things like that. Like that's a pretty dead giveaway that he's just interested in that. So, you know, Mm -hmm. I, I help women kind of, you know, navigate through that and help them figure out if that's what they really want or if they want something more serious, something that's going to last, then, you know, I'm like, you know, I kind of advised advise them to, you know, look for somebody else. (laughs) Yeah. Do you have like a top three or top five red flags you always share with women? Um, there are so many. (laughs) (laughs) Do you have like a favorite or I don't know if it's a favorite, but like the ones are like automatic, you should probably uh, look for someone else. Oh, um, a lot of it is just attitude. Like if he's got, you know, a demanding attitude, I consider that a big red flag. If he is overly concerned with her past um, and how many other men she's been with, I consider that a red flag as well. Um, And like I said, you know, just diving right into the sexual talk is one for sure as well. Yeah. I can see the demanding one um, from like, not from experience, but from men that I've known, you know, it is difficult, like, or it's, it's like obvious if they're, if they have more of that alpha mentality, Mm -hmm. like, I feel like you can tell right away, Like they're a little cocky and they're a little like they have um, they have like set rules already, you know, before the relationship even started. So I don't know. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah, And I have found that it seems to be common for men like that to pursue introverted women like us because they think that they're going to get their way. And yeah, that's definitely something I've noticed. And it's like, no, buddy, <laughs> <I'm>, <laughs> that's, that's not uh, how things are happening with me. That's just not. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I think people don't realize it's just because someone's like quiet doesn't mean they don't have a more assertive <laughs> personality. You know? Yeah. Um, Definitely. Your second, what was the second red flag? Oh, if they're overly, um, I forgot. Oh, concerned with their past, right? Oh, yeah. Yeah. So, you know, if they're constantly asking, you know, or if they ask how many men have you been with, that to me is a red flag. Now, I understand if a man is concerned about his health, like if he's trying to look out for, you know, STDs and stuff like that, that's a concern, you know, that's a legitimate concern. Um, In that case, you know, you can ask specifically about, you know, their, you know, their health history. But if you, but if you frame it like, oh, well, how many men have you slept with? Like, that's a different... (laughs) That's a different conversation, you know, Um, because at that point, I don't know, I'll say this. It doesn't matter what answer you give to that question. (laughs) 
no man is going to like the answer. I don't care if you tell him one person or a hundred. Number one, he's not going to believe you. And number two, he ain't going to be able to handle the answer. (laughs) (laughs) That's just, that's just my thought on that. Yeah. Cause I'm trying to think of, cause I know there's like some women who are very like overly concerned about somebody's past. And so, you know, someone listening might be like, well, I ask all this question. So like, I just kind of wanted to dig deeper. Like, why is that a red flag? Um, well, in what, you know, in, in some respect, you know, it's completely normal to ask. I mean, you want to ask about their past in a way that, that is coming from a curious and understanding perspective. Like we all share certain parts of our past with each other. And I think that that's normal. Um, So don't get me wrong on that. I mean, like, obviously, you know, you want to know about the history of the person that you're with. um, And that's fine. Um, But I think that when you get so concerned about a particular, yeah, just like a particular part of someone's past, you have to understand, like, where is that coming from? Like, are you just curious about where they're coming from? Or is it coming from an insecurity? Like, are you worried about, oh, are they going to get back with their ex? It, you know, is that why you're concerned about, so concerned about their ex? Because you're worried that they're going to get together again? So if that's something that is overly concerning you, that might present to be a problem in the relationship because, you know, at that point, the underlying issue there is trust. You know, you're having trust issues with a detail about their past. Yeah. Okay. That, that makes a lot more sense. Yeah. Yeah. So it's Um, not, it's not just about, you know, asking about someone's past. It's overly concerning yourself with a particular part of someone's past from the perspective of being you know, untrust, untrusting. If that makes yeah, sense. no, that makes sense. Like it could come from, it could stem from just like some type of insecurity that they have and that can lead to like problems, you know, down the road. So yeah, that makes sense. I get that. Um, so for your clients though, like what if that's how their nature, like, do you ever tell a client like, you know, maybe you should hold off in dating and focus on yourself? Like, has that ever been in in a discussion? If I have permission to give them that type of guidance from them, then, then I might say something like that. Um, But typically, I try to help them uncover these things themselves. Um, I'll ask them questions that will encourage them to think for themselves about where it is they're coming from and help them realize their own insecurities and just try to encourage them to hold themselves accountable for their own part in a relationship. You know, and and what areas can they improve on? What areas do they are they struggling with it? They might not have even realized. Yeah. Cause sometimes um, I know people who have like an issue with dating or like, you know, their relationships, their relationships never last or they're constantly, you know, breaking up with people. And so at some point, sometimes you have to think, you know, is it the, is it them or is it me? Yes, exactly. (laughs) You know, and it's, it's one thing to tell somebody, you know, I can sit there as a coach and be like, you know, you need to fix X, Y, and Z, but it's so much more powerful to, to collaborate with them in such a way that they start to discover that themselves. Yeah. I think that's a a much better approach because you know, it kind of goes back to like, for me, for example, like, I don't like when people tell me what to do. 
it kind of, it's like the same thing. Like, I don't like when people tell me like who I am, like I, I need to self discover that for me to accept it. Because if someone's telling me that I am the certain person, like I may not believe that, you know, Mm -hmm. (laughs) I guess it depends who it's coming from too. (laughs) Yeah. And when the realization comes from within, it's so much more impactful and, you know, when someone is starting to come up with their own ideas and their own um, action plans for solving their problems, they're going to be much more committed to following through with the steps that it takes to improve and, you know, change their outcomes, which is ultimately what I do most of the time as a coach and consultant is sort of help, you know, facilitate that positive change and, you know, like the creating a goal and taking action and following through and, you know, helping them realize things that they can do to, you know, work through their struggles, um, you know, and realizing their part as well. Yeah. And I think just taking care of that and taking care of who, like the struggles that they're dealing with and their insecurities, that can really shine through. Like I was telling my friend, um, that I can tell when she is not feeling herself. Like I can tell when she's at a low and when she's at a high, you know, like when you're, when you're able to like take care of yourself and you're able to like figure out, figure things out and figure out your struggles and how to cope and all that stuff. It really does shine through you physically too. You know, you can see when someone's confident or when they're happy And I feel like, you know, being able to do that probably will help you in the long run for, you know, finding someone and dating people. Oh, yeah, because people are attracted to happy, healthy people. And Mm -hmm. when you're happy and healthy and confident and feeling good about yourself, that will reflect in your everyday actions, you know, and how you present yourself. And it's, you know, ultimately just going to help your, it's, it's going to just help your outcomes and, and expand on your choices. And, you know, whereas, you know, if you're feeling down about yourself and insecure, you know, that shines through and people can tell. Um, Mm -hmm. And, you know, so when you, when you're happy and healthy, Um, you know, that, that sets the foundation that is the foundation for having a a happy, healthy, long lasting relationship is, you know, you got, you got to be good with yourself first. So do you, I know there's like this saying, but people love to use, um, like you need to love yourself before you love others. And so do you agree with that statement? Like, do you like that statement? I think I mean, in, in short, yes. I think that, the, you know, there is some nuance to that, though, too, because, you know, it's, you know, we're all imperfect human beings. And there are moments where, let's just be honest, we don't love ourselves 100% of the time. And, you know, but we have friends, we have family, we have partners who still love us no matter what. Um, yeah. So in that respect, I don't necessarily agree with that, but I mean, I understand why it sounds good. (laughs) Yeah. And I understand, I I understand why it's a good, um, a fundamental, you know, mental practice though. What do you think? Um, (laughs) I'm glad you asked. No, (laughs) uh, I, I'm kind of in the same boat as you are because, this is just from like my experience, but you know, like I mentioned, I was with my husband since I was 15 and obviously I am not the same person I was 15, you know, and I had to learn to grow and learn to figure out who I am and like, you know, self-discovery and understand like who am, who's like, what's the adult I'm going to become. And so during that time, there wasn't a whole lot of self-love. I doubted myself a lot. And it does like, of course, impact our relationship, but 
in a way it like made our relationship stronger that we got to grow together. And even though um, we were both like kind of separately trying to figure out who we are as adults, we were still able to like maintain our relationship. So I don't, I don't know. It's just, it's hard for me to say that because like, I don't, I didn't go that route, you know, like I didn't, we didn't break up and I didn't go on this whole like self journey uh, or self discovery journey and figure out who I am. And, uh, and, you know, I don't want to say fixing myself, but like, you know, um, learning to love myself. And that's like a, that's a continuous thing for me too. Like loving Mm -hmm. myself is something I struggle with and have to deal with every single day. And so with that mindset, like at, like I would just be single forever. I feel like, (laughs) you know, if I followed that motto. Um, Yeah. I do think at, I think to an extent you should love yourself. Like I think to an extent you should work on certain aspects of yourself. Like if you're, I don't know if you're very extremely insecure and that's getting in a way of like having a meaningful relationship, then, then yeah, I would say like, maybe you need to take a step back. Um, Uh I wouldn't say like, just break up with your, uh, you know, your partner, but I would say like, take a step back and, try to figure that out, you know, because then yeah. it's kind of just destructing. It's starting to impact a relationship. It's going outside of just hurting you, but hurting others. If that makes sense. Yeah. Yes, it does. It makes perfect sense. And I would say that's pretty awesome that you've maintained your relationship through all of those, you know, inner self you know, all the, all the self healing and the self transformations that you went through. Um, cause it does seem that that's c- kind of rare, isn't it? Is, you know, mm-hmm. um, you know, when you're young and you get together and you are compatible with a certain person, I mean, me too. I'm not, I don't even think I'm compatible with the same person that I was when I was 15. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, yeah, I feel like I'm such a different person. And, but it's pretty cool that you've maintained your relationship through all of that growth. It's yeah. Pretty cool. I, thank you. Yeah. I don't know a whole lot of people who stayed together since high school, but the ones I do know, like there's, a, there's a few of them and I think they're just able to stay together cause they grew, they didn't grow apart, you know, like some people change drastically from when they were younger. And if you change drastically, you know, it just kind of depends whether the other person changes kind of a similar way or if they like start going a different direction. And we just so happen to still like the same things and have similar interests and still even like our political and religious beliefs are very, very similar, which is very rare for a lot of people, you know? Mm -hmm. Um, And so the, I think the fact that we still have that similarity, it kind of helped us stay together. Uh, Yeah. That's awesome. Even though we're definitely not the same person. And like, he's definitely (laughs) not who he was like when he was 15 either. (laughs) Yeah. So for me and mine, it was, you know, cause we were in our early twenties when we got together and I think that both of us were still growing in certain ways and immature in in other ways. And one thing I've noticed is that through life struggles, we've strengthened our connection. You know, we have went through injury, illness, you know, the death of our parents, um, and we've moved a whole bunch of times and, you know, had all these terrible... <laughs> roommate and landlord issues and we've been through it and we've stayed together and we've kind of considered each other as team like teammates um in this crazy world and we're just in it together and it's just kind of been that you know through all of the shit you know through through everything and i think that it has really you know we've grown and matured together like we've i think that we've come together rather than growing apart. Yeah. So I feel like kind of, you know, it's kind of similar to your situation too. Like 
through life, we've, you know, learned to come closer together rather than, you know, falling apart. Yeah. And that's amazing. And I think that's what makes a great formula for a good relationship. And I think relationships need to go through a struggle. You know, it can't be happy all the time. Can't be like the honeymoon stage forever. And I think those hard, like those hardships that you guys went through was necessary to see if you're meant to be together. Mm -hmm. And I think that's why the pandemic was so eye opening for so many people because it's a really big struggle that everyone had to go through and they had to do it with whoever, you know, they were living with or whoever like is the closest with them. I guess proximity also (laughs) Uh, emotionally and proximity. (laughs) So it was a good Testament to determining, you know, their relationship. Yeah. And I, and I think that that's part of why, introverts have you know in general haven't had much of an issue there because you know that's kind of you know these practices of learning of understanding how to just be together with each other you know is something that we just do by nature yeah I agree I think I think that's what, you know, like my husband's an introvert too. I think he's probably a little more extroverted than I am though, but it works out because we, we do like spending time alone, but, or like we like spending time together, but we don't also don't mind spending time alone together. And yeah. um, Yeah. So pandemic was not, it did not hurt our relationship in any way. (laughs) (laughs) We just got to hang out more. (laughs) Right. Yeah. So like, I know we talk about introverts dating a lot, but do you think an extra or an introvert could make a good couple? I think that they can. Um, I, I think that there, you know, could be some, some, you know, advantages and disadvantages. I would say that an extrovert might be able to help an introvert, you know, come out of their shell every once in a while and have some fun uh, from time to time. Um, But I, I, you know, obviously I don't think that that would be the case all the time, Um, you know, just every once in a while. And I think a lot of introverts, you know, as we've discussed, you know, wouldn't mind, wouldn't mind going out, you know, and, you know, out, you know, getting out of their comfort zone every once in a while. And I think that an introvert might be able to help the extrovert understand themselves inwardly and their inner world and what's going on that can't immediately be observable externally. And I think an introvert could help them get in touch with that part of themselves. Yeah. Yeah. So it's a good, like, they can balance each other out. Mm Mm-hmm. And I would say if there are are any obstacles that an introvert-extrovert relationship might entail, could be, let's see, I would say compromising on social engagements would be one. Um. I can imagine that an introvert might occasionally feel overwhelmed by the extrovert's interactions with people. Like, say, for example, if they're constantly going to the bar, you know, an introvert might not be comfortable with their partner constantly being at the bar every other night. Um, So that might be an obstacle. Um, And I would say that an introvert and extrovert are going to probably approach disagreements in a different way you know an extrovert might feel more comfortable speaking more freely when it comes to what's on their mind whereas an introvert is going to be a little bit more strategic with how they communicate and maybe wait until they feel confident in what they're going to say um but I think you know with all of the you know the pros and the cons I think that it's worth 
discovering what kind of energy works well with you and your personality. Yeah, that makes sense. I think, um, I think it's just all about, I guess, meeting, meeting them and exploring how it would work. And I think during like the dating phase, um, I think that's when you get to like kind of discover whether it works or not. Right. Because, because then you, either person can choose the date, like how how the date is going to go, like whether it's going to be like moving a dinner or if it's going to be like something crazy, like a scavenger hunt, (laughs) you know, (laughs) and like from there kind of, kind of figure out like, okay, is this the type of stuff like I would want to do for the rest of my life or, (laughs) you know, yeah. Um, so I, so we are at the hour mark. So I want to make sure that I have, I give you enough time to talk about like any last minute things, or if you want to like share any like big advice for audience. Um, I know a lot of my audience are introverted women. I mean, there are some men there too that may, you know, may like, uh, appreciate the advice too, but um, anything like that you want to, you want to talk, um, talk about before we end the show and also like, where can people find you? Okay. Um, well, you can find me at my website. Uh, my blog website is dames that Um, and if you are somebody who's an introvert and you are having issues with your dating and relation or like your love life in general, um, you know, that's something that I can help people with. Um, I definitely understand a lot of introvert struggles because I am one myself. Um, so if you would like private, um, you know, one-on-one consulting with me, um, either around being introverted or any other dating or relationship issue, you can go to thamesthatknow.com slash consulting. And then um, there you can find some information about my consulting packages. If you just want to do like a one-off or one or two sessions, or if you want to do like a three-month package, we can we can all work that out. Um, but um, just to let everybody know that I am available for, for that, for those who need additional private help with their issues. Awesome. Well, thank you. I will also add your website to the description so people can check that out in the show notes. And um, I will tag you in on Instagram, like social media, so people can check out your profile there as well. Thank you so much. Thanks for making it to the end. If you enjoy what you hear and want to stay up to date on the show, please follow me on Facebook and or on Instagram. You can also check out my website at thetalkativeintrovertpodcast.com. All the information will be on there as well as in the show notes. If you want to help support the show, please review and rate the podcast and share it with your friends and family. Thanks so much, and I'll talk to you guys in the next episode.